Here we go guys, this is the next instalment of Craft Club. Can you believe it? We're on number five. We're going to have, well, we're going to have a little bit of shaker when it comes to our life and this is all about the shaker techniques. Now when it comes to your Craft Club, number five, you're going to get, of course, your card that's going to sit inside your binder and it will let you know everything that you're going to be getting. But let's have a look at that now ourselves everything is coming in your wallet. Now it comes in your Craft Club wallet for it to go into your binder and let's dive in as you can see here again this month it is jam packed full. Now what you are going to be getting is more inspiration and ideas for you to follow along with but you need all of the actual items to be making your cards and projects. Now with it being all about the shaker you are getting this big bag 50 grams of your sequence and it's like an Aurora Borealis peachy colour that you've got. You're going to be getting that. You're then also going to be getting crystals. Now you've got six grams so it's full to the brim of all of this. It's like your really fine glitter. You're also going to be getting these glass beads. Now this jar is also full of these tiny little glass beads for you to then pop into your cards and your projects and then you're going to be getting this chunky glitter too. So you've got a lovely selection of different thicknesses and mediums for you to pop inside your actual projects. Now what you're also going to be getting is the clear stamps. Now these are got lovely little sentiments on there. You've got some little embellishment florals there for you to then colour and cut out and you're going to get some of the dyes to go with these as well that we'll see just shortly. Now when it comes to the actual shakers you're going to get a variety of different dyes. Now when it comes to the dyes you've got some framework, you've got some hearts, you've got some love sentiments. They're going to make incredible shaker apertures but then you've got additional little embellishment stars and florals tags and that as well for you to decorate. So that's your dies that you're going to be getting. Of course you're going to be needing your printed papers. You've got 16 of the most beautiful single-sided printed papers. Now you're going to be matting and layering with these. You're going to be using these as the shaker front, ripping, tearing, inking, spritzing. It's a matte cardstock so you can absolutely do that all 8x8 eight eight in size. Then what you're also going to be getting is cardstock panels. Now with the cardstock panels, you're going to be getting two different sizes in different colours. So you're going to be getting your 5.5 by 5.5. So you might use these for mats and layers. You might use these as the shaker base. You might want to make card blanks out of them. They're there. But then what you're also going to be getting is all of these 6x4 card blanks. So in total, you are getting 26 pieces of these ones and you've got colours that are going to match your five and a half by five and a half. And once again, this could be the front, this could be the shakers. You might just want to cut out some of the embellishments, but they're there for you to then get creative with. Then when it comes to actual shakers, you need acetate. Acetate is what is then going to close up that shaker aperture front, but then it's not going to let any of the beads or the glitter escape. Now that's in there when it comes to your acetate, five and a half by five and a half inches, and you've got 10 of these. These do have a protective cover, so you just need to peel it off once you're ready to use. They're in there. Then to actually adhere your actual acetate, to your card fronts, you are going to be getting red liner tape as well. So this is your really, really strong adhesive. So you've got a full ream when it comes to your red liner tape, five millimeters in width. So you've got a nice width there. Then when it comes to actually creating the height of your card, you're even getting your foam on a roll as well. So this is going to allow the glitter or the sequins or the beads to actually shake. That's in there included. 
Then what you're getting is some rub-on transfers. So you do have your sentiment stamps, but you've got some rub-ons because what you can do with these ones is rub these onto your acetate, which gives it an extra lease of life when it comes to the sentiment of your project. You're just going to chop the ones up that you want to use and then use them all individually. So you've got all of these ones in here as well. You've got that one pack and then you're going to be getting different ribbons. So you are going to be getting some of your seam and satin ribbons here so within that one there you have got your different widths being three mil and then when it comes to the additional ribbon you're going to get these three colors which are six millimeters in width and this one here you can see which is your seam binding ribbon that's included too so you are getting so much that is jam packed full when it comes to your number five which is all about your shaker techniques you're going to be able to make your cards you're going to be able to make your projects maybe some tags maybe some easel cards all of that you're going to be able to make when it comes to craft club number five which which is all about your shaker techniques. Now, when it comes to the craft club, this one being number five, and it's all about shaker techniques, we're going to be making this really lovely card. Now, it's not overly complicated for this one. It's quite simplistic, but you've got some layers. You've got that aperture. We're using the foam as well to create the depth for the actual sequence for it to be flowing. So let's get started. What we're going to do to start with is we're going to take one of the 8 by 8 pattern papers that you've got. Now I have already cut this to five and a half inches by three and a half inches and what I have done is I've just created a really thin black matting layer. Now this is using one of the card panels that you're also getting included but what I want to do instead of having my adhesive just around the corners like I would usually do I want to give it a really good coverage on the back and there's a reason for that. So what we're going to do to start with you can use your tape runner I'm just going to go in with my Colal tacky glue and we're going to go around the edges just as I usually do and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do squiggle squiggle back and forwards that's going to be enough for it to give it a really good even coverage on the back once we come to cut which I will explain so we are then going to pop that into place so we're just going to line that up relevant of whichever adhesive you are using we're just going to give that a really good pressure and because we've done a little squiggle on the back and I'm now pressing down that then just pushes and expands that glue to give it a really good coverage so once you're happy with that we're going to come in with our set of dies now we're going to be using the love die the actual aperture will be of love so let's take which at first looks a bit strange but that is then creating the aperture of the love that we can see where we're going with so what i'm going to do is i'm then going to position that in the middle now you can pop it wherever you like you know you could have a little bit of fun go at the top corner or maybe a bit of an angle but i am going to go in and i'm just going to centralize it as best i can we're then going to go in with our low tack tape and we're just going to go in and secure it now our low tack tape is phenomenal but with the pressure of the Gemini it can catch some of the fibres so therefore I'm just making sure my tape's on the inside because technically this would be the waste not that we'll use it as waste we'll use it elsewhere down the line but what we now know is we know that none of the excess area surrounding it will then just have any little bit of fibres taken away while we're doing that cutting, let's also go in with a piece of the black. Now remember, you've got the black included as well from the four by six panels and the five and a half by five and a half. So we're going to do these two cuttings together and then I'm just going to then secure that one down. Now, because I'm using our Gemini, the plate configuration is as normal because it's your wafer thin die. So base cutting plate, frosted shim we're then going to go in with our top plate so we're then going to feed that in to the gemini let that do its thing 
Now, even although you've got your pattern paper with the black cardstock, it's going to cut like a dream because of our dies and because of the power of the Gemini. So let's bring this one in. Let's move that one out of the way. So what we've now got is if we then just pop that one out, leave that to the side. You can take that out later and use it elsewhere. And now what we've got is we've now got our Aperture of Love. Now remember, there was a reason why we spread the glue all over. And that is because if I didn't, what would happen is your pattern paper layer and your black layer would separate. So what you're going to have is you're going to have a little bit of openness between the layers. So by spreading the glue, I know that all of that is adhered to all the way, edge to edge, and you're not going to get that separation from the back to the front. What we're then going to do is we're going to go in and we're just going to carefully take out that die cut love. Now it's a lovely little swirl of a font. So what you will see is that will then just shortly sit nicely in the middle. So once you've got these couple of layers already done, what I've also done is taken a piece of the white card included and I've cut it just a little bit smaller than my front layer, just a little bit. So what we can then do is we're just going to come in here. This one we can sit to the side for now. This one, we need to have something that's creating a barrier. And that's where your acetate comes into play. So I've taken one of the five and a half by five and a half sheets and I've just cut this one down. Now it's not a specific size as such. It's just enough so that it's going to cover my actual love aperture. Now, all of the sheets have got that protective back in. Just give it a scrape on the corner until it starts to come away. Peel it off and discard it. That can sit here for a moment too. And then what we're going to do is we're going to bring in our red liner tape. Now, it's five millimetres in width, so you've got a really good width when it comes to the coverage. You can either go around your actual sentiment or you can go around the edge of your actual acetate. I like to go around my sentiment because then I can get as close to the actual die cut as I possibly can. And this bit doesn't need to be neat. All that we're wanting to do is get a really, really nice coverage of the red liner tape around that aperture. So we're just going to follow it all the way along. We're then going to come all the way up. And then what we can then do is come back on ourselves to where we started. Now, it doesn't matter if there's any gaps at this point where the red liner tape is. This is just to adhere your actual acetate. And because it's red liner, what that is, that means it's the most strong dry tape adhesive you can possibly get. Now, you'll maybe just start to see that. There we go. We can just see that glisten as the idea as to where I've positioned it. So what we then need to do is take that off. So I'm going to take my pokey tool. So we're just going to go in corner to corner. We're just going to peel each of these ones off. And then once you've got that last one, what we can then do is take our acetate and we can just pop that into position. And then we're going to press. So we're going to give that a really, really good press. And then that gives us that barrier now. So nothing's going to fall out of the front. That's super strong and that's going nowhere. Now what we need to do is we need to create that little bit of lift because we're going to put some of our sequins or maybe your bleeds or maybe your glitter, whatever ones you want to use, you can pop into here. So let's go in with our foam on a roll. So with the foam on a roll, what we're going to do with this one, something similar, but you want to make sure all the joins are right together to stop anything from escaping. So what I mean by that is we're going to work our way along and then once I get to a little bit past where my aperture starts, I'm going to turn it around. We're going to press that down. And then this bit here, we're just going to go right in. We're then just going to press. And that is completely joined. Doesn't need to be neat, but it needs to be touching together. We're then going to work our way along. And then we're going to do the same. Now, I just like to create sort of like a box. I'm not necessarily doing what I've done within this bit here because it allows extra movement for what we're going to use. 
And when it comes to the last bit, just make sure that it's nicely pressed right up to the edge so that you've got nothing that can escape. And then to balance the layers, all that we're going to do is we're just going to come all the way around. We're just then going to fill that edge to edge. Now this bit, the edges don't have to be touching. All this is doing is this is creating stability and it's going to stop any of the edges from dipping when it's on your card blank. So now that we've got all of these ones ready, what we're then going to do is let's take all these off. So we're just going to peel the backings off. So we're just working our way around, peeling each of the backings off. We're then going to go into the center. We're going to peel all these off. And then what we can then do so we can bring in our shaker element. Now you've got two choices here. You can either put, I'm going to use the glass seed beads. You can either decant them into that aperture and then come along and place that over the top. Or what you can do is you can pop your beads in the middle there, then come along and place that over the top. It's purely personal preference. It can be easier to decan into the back of the aperture if it's possible, because then your foam is going to stop it from moving about, certainly because they're tiny little circle beads. So let's do that. Let's go in and then I'm just going to pour some in till you're happy. Now, whatever you're using, the beads, the sequins, the glitter, make sure nothing goes onto that layer of the foam. Otherwise, what will happen is then that's going to then, it's going to create that openness. There's going to be areas for the beads to fall out. So what we're then going to do is that we're going to go over with our piece of card and then we're going to press. Give that a good press all the way around. Turn it around. You've now got your shaker element. So all that we need to do is come in to finish this off. Let's bring in our little die cut sentiment. I'm going to use my tacky glue for this one. You can use your dotty tape runner if you have them. But for me, I do find with the acetate, my tacky glue works a treat. It will need just a little bit longer to dry because your acetate is a non-porous surface, but it will work an absolute dream. That can sit into the middle there and then we can press and then I'm just going to add my embellishments before I pop it onto my card blank. So I've taken some of this peach colour which is from the collection and I've used the little love heart die to die cut out too and then I've also gone in with a little strip of black card and just created a little point. That can then go into there so we're just going to set that one on and then all that I need to do is come in with the two hearts that I've cut. Let's then go in with one dot, two dots. That one can go into there. That one can go into there. And then all that I'm going to do is come in with my four by six card blank. Let's just straighten that one up and then to adhere that, you can be using your red liner tape. However, I like to keep that for my shakers. So therefore, we're just going to go in with our tape runner. We're going to work our way around. Or you can still use your tacky glue, seeing as you were using that in the first place. Bring in our card blank. That one can go into position. Press it in. And then you can come along and add your own little insert or verse in the middle but that's how super easy it is to create such an effective shaker using the aperture, using the love, using the glass beads. And that's just one of the projects that you can make from Craft Club Month 5, which is all about shaker techniques. Now, when it comes to the craft club, this one be number five, and it's all about shaker techniques. It's not just cards that you can do. You know, you can do, you can create projects, but then what about creating a little tag? Now, you can create this really, really cute shaker card for any gift 
or any project but you know what we're even going to make that because it's very very simple now what I have done is I've brought in a piece of the pattern paper that you get included and I have already cut this one down to seven inches by six inches so what we're going to do on this shorter side let's just turn that over and then I'm going to go in with my red liner tape and I'm going to put a line down the side we're just going to then snip that one off and then what we can then do is we can then just peel that one off like so and then all that we're going to do now we're not going to squash the cardstock we're just going to roughly line it up here we're then going to then just turn that over I like to then grab one end first and hold and because it's a red liner tape it's going to grab till you're ready to match the rest up so I'm going to do the same at the opposite side and then when it comes to the middle I'm just going to press then what you can do is you can come in with a ruler or a bone folder or something like that just to press down and then you've got the cylinder then what you like to do is to come along now I'm going to use my tacky glue for this one so we're going to go on one side for instance let's do the base here because we've got that lovely floral what we're going to do is we're essentially going to pinch that side down and then the next one we go in the opposite direction and then that's how it creates that little gift bag treat which is super cool now you can go in with the red liner tape again at this point or I do find it because we've already created the cylinder I find it easier just to go in and put a line of our tacky glue and we're only doing that on what is essentially the base because the other end you want to pop something in so you could come along with maybe a little hook and loop or you can create your own little tag kind of clasp to hold it in place whichever thing or item you want to use to create that closure you can absolutely do that but if I just press that and I'm just letting that heat for the glue build up and then as I say so that is the bottom and then for this top bit you would just press in the opposite direction add your hook and loop or your little closure whatever you want to use and then there is that little bag which is super cute and easy but we want to create the tag now to actually have the actual sentiment on so what we're going to do is we're going to go in with a piece of our white cardstock that comes included and I've cut that to one inches by three inches we're then going to bring in our dies now there is not an actual tag die what there is is there is a top of the tag which is this one here so what we can then do is place that towards the top there we're going to bring in our low tack tape now for this bit I find it easier to do it on my plates to start with so we're going to go in hold that down get that into position if you want to use your measurements on the glass mat to get it even you can do but it is quite a simple die to line up so we're going to press that one in and we're good to go but let's die cut a few other layers to, to create the actual tag you're going to need the aperture and that's where this die comes into place because we've got it looks just like a rectangle because that's what it is but the inside cuts away and the rest there's no outside cutting edge so then that just means you're going to create that inner aperture so that one we're going to also set on into position we can then take our low tack tape and then we're just going to secure that so I'm going to put my low tack tape onto the inner part because that's what's going to come away and we don't want and then let's do some of our additional die cutting while we're here so I'm going to go in with a piece of the green that you get included and let's go in with this floral here then we can come in with some of this peach tone and let's go in with a couple of the stars that you've got and then what we can also do is we can come in with this deeper shade of pink and we're going to use the actual butterfly and pop that one into place once you've got them all on your mat let's just go in to secure so we can tape all these down and then what we can then do is then bring in our plate configuration which is our frosted magnetic top plate 
It's the junior plates that I'm using in our larger machine, so we're just letting that do its thing. It can, of course, pause it in reverse, but let's just run it through. So what we can then do is then move all of these out of the way. So take that one off, take that one off, and that one off, and then that one off. The only additional piece of die cutting we need to do is take this floral, and then we can come along with some of this bright fuchsia, tape that one down, and then what we can do is run that one through. So for that one, I am just going to let it do its thing. We're just going to pause it, and then we're going to reverse it. That's then just going to mean it doesn't have to go all the way through for that tiny little one. And you may have noticed the size of them as well. So if you've got your Gemini Mini, like most of you do have, you can be using that easily, no problem whatsoever. So let's move that to the side. And then what we can then do is let's put our stars here. We're going to go in with our additional one here. What we're then going to do is let's take that one, that one. The butterfly we can move to the side. And then what we can also do is take that away. Let's take that away. And then all we need to do here is just come in and just finish that cut. So snip that away and then snip that away. And now you've got your tag with the aperture within the middle. So what we're going to do is let's just finish this floral first. So I'm going to go in here. I'm just going to snip the top off. Now I don't need that bottom part. I'm just going to come in with my glue. I'm just going to put a little piece there. So we're building up our floral here. We're then going to add that in to the center like so. And then all that I'm going to do is to create a feature in the middle, I'm going to go in with a magenta, which is MG5. And I'm just going to add a little bit of darkness in the middle, just a little circle. And then what we've then got is a little floral that's then going to decorate. Now you're going to want to do that three times and you're wanting to do it on the back as well. So if I bring these ones in, just so you've got the idea as to where we're going here. One, two, three, ready to decorate your tag. And as you can see, I've done it on the back as well. So that's them ready to go. So let's go back in now with our tag. So what we also need is we need a piece of the acetate that comes included. And it's just big enough to go onto the back. So we can now come in with our red liner tape and we're going to work our way around. And the actual width of the framework of your tag is perfect for your red liner tape. So that's going to go all the way around. We're going to then work that to the edge. And when it comes to the red liner tape, the corners don't have to match just as long as you've got enough there for your acetate. So we're going to take that one off. We're going to take that one off. And then we're going to take the other two off here. So if we take them, them, and them, we're then going to come in with our acetate. I've already taken my protective backing off. And then all that I'm going to do is I'm just going to go into the corner there with the acetate, press that in. If you feel you've got any additional overhang, what you can then do in the corner, because you've got that curvature, we're just going to snip that acetate away. It doesn't need to be neat. No one's going to see it. But now we've got that barrier when it comes to your actual shaker element. Then what we're going to do before we assemble it, we're going to bring in an additional one. So I've done exactly the same, nothing different. So we've got two ready to go. And then on, well, either one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn one of them to the right side. And then I'm going to go along and I'm just going to take one of my rub-ons. Now, I've roughly cut around. You've got a back in, so peel that off. And then what we're going to do is position that in the middle. Now, I like to assemble my tag first, and that is because I now know the perfect position to put my little sentiment on. So let's do that onto white card to make it a bit easier for you to see. And it's because, uh, being a rub-on, 
that means you literally rub on the sentiment. So I'm just going to go in with, I'm going to go in with my bone folder. If you've got an old ice, ice lolly stick or popsicle stick, you can use something like that. Something that's flat that you can then just go in and add that pressure. We're just going to run back and forwards. And if you're not good with pressure, don't worry. Lightly and often is going to work an absolute treat. So we're just going to rub, 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 hence why it's called rub on. And then what we're going to do, I like to then just hold one side with my finger first. And then we're just going to peel that top layer off. And then if it's all there, which it is, perfect. We've now got our sentiment nicely adhered onto my acetate. I like to press with my finger and you've got for my friend. Now we're ready to build. So what we're going to do with this one, turn it over. We're then going to come in with our foam on a roll and we're going to do exactly what we've done with the red liner tape. The only difference is when it comes to each corner, we're going to make sure we've butt right up to the edge of the previous layer of foam. Work that one in, work that all the way around, snip to the end, and then we can then take that final one here. So once we are there, what we can now do is then we can then come along. So I'm going to take my backing off each of these ones here. We're going to come in with that big bag of sequins. So we're going to then bring in the bag. Now I like to sprinkle this in because you don't want to get any on your foam. So we're just going to go in and sprinkle. If you do, like I've got one there, we can just pick it off. So we're just going to sprinkle that in. And you can add as much or as little as you want. Don't overfill, otherwise you're going to create this bulge. You're going to then create additional separation over time. So you just get a nice little amount. Move that to the side. Hold with your fingers if you do get any little bits that's jumped over. And then we're just going to move that one in and that one in. And then what we can then do is then just sit that one over to the side here. Be careful with this bit because, of course, if any little bits jump, then you're going to then have that on the foam. That's fine. That's fine there. Let's take that one off. And then let's take that one off. Peel that with my hands. I just want to move that one there. And then move that one too. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with the little florals that I've done. So we're going to create a little scene and I'm going to use the foam to adhere that together. So I'm going to create one, I'm going to create two, and then what we can then do is come in with the third one and create three. Hold that down and then at this point what we can then do is come along and then we're just going to press that in, overlay, overline, Get that where you need. And then what we've then got is we've got our little shaker of our tag with the floral in the background ready to add to our project. So let's bring this one in. I'm going to go in as well with some of the ribbon that you've got included too. So I've already tied a bow in one of them. We're then just going to then take the other one. We're then going to feed that one through. If we then add our ribbon through the little hole, turn that in on itself here, and then there is our little ribbon tag. Just go in at an angle to chop that one off. And then all that we need to do is just come along. Let's go the right way. I'm going to add a little bit of tacky glue here and on the acetate. We're going to bring in one of the stars. We're then going to bring in that smaller star into here. You can decorate the other side as well if you want, but what I'm just going to do is add that little bit of tacky glue. We're going to add in that butterfly like so. Let's just pick that butterfly up into position like so. 
And then what we can then do is come along and then I'm just going to create my own little closure for now so that you can see how it comes together. As I say, at this point, you'll maybe want to do a little bit of hook and loop or you maybe want to then punch a hole and then feed the ribbon through. But that one, we can go on into here. I'm just going to use a little bit of our tape runner to actually hold the tag in. This is where you might want to punch a little hole for your actual ribbon to then feed through. So once you're happy enough with that one, let's just add a little bit of our tape runner. We're then just going to position that one over the top and then press. I'm going to add a little bit more and then we can come along with our bow and position that. And then what I've done already is, if you remember, on the die set, you have got this big die here. So what I've done is I've taken a little strip of the pattern paper and I've cut it to a little strip, as you can see, and then run that one through my Gemini. And then that's created a little border. So that's going to decorate the bottom to finish off. So let's go along with our glue. You can do it on the top if you want to. That's entirely up to yourself. But that one can go into position. It gives it a little bit extra decoration. It gives it that little bit extra strength on the bottom as well. And I've done that one twice. We can pop this one on the opposite side. Turn it into here. Once you're lined up, you're just going to then move that in. And then if you've got a little overhang, which you'll probably have, we're just going to then snip. And then we're just going to snip. And now all of your gifts or your projects, you can now create these super, super cool little tags. And then if you wanted to create a different tag that's blank and then have that to the back so it's free flowing, you can then write your little sentiment on there. But that is with your sequence that you've got. You can use your beads, you can use the glitters. But that's another way in which you can then be using our craft club month number five shaker techniques, but with a lovely tag. With craft club number five, all about the shaker techniques, we're going to make a little tag shaker, but we're going to pop it onto a card. We're going to make this really, really lovely little thank you card that you can see here, which you could either use the tag to go on a gift, or as you can see here, it's lovely on the front of an actual card. So let's get started. And what we're going to do is we're going to bring in a piece of the white cardstock. Now I'm going to come in with my die set here and you've got two heart dies. So you've got a solid heart and then you've got a smaller heart, whereas the inside cuts away, it's solid, but the outside there's no cutting edge and it just keeps these little perforation lines all the way round. So what we're going to do within this one here is this first one, we're going to create our solid background. But what we also want to then do is then add our little sentiment. So we're going to come in with one of the peel-offs. Now you can, if you want, cut and then position the sentiment. However, it is so much easier to take your sentiment, rub it into place, and then you know where to pop your die. So that's into place. We're just going to go in with our bone folder. You can use an ice lolly stick or a popsicle stick, something along that line, just for you to come along, give that a rub, and then you can then peel the back and away. Now, I like to add a little bit of pressure and just roll and rub back and forwards, as you can see. If you don't have a lot of pressure, in your hands, then you can still do it lightly and maybe just do it a little bit longer than I am. So what we're going to do is once you're happy enough, we're just going to then take our pokey tool. Now I do like to just hold with one hand and start to peel. And that's because if I've missed any bits, 
I can just put it back in the same position and carry on rubbing. So then what we can then do is then move and peel and then there is your sentiment. Beautifully adhered to your card. I like to just go in and press. I don't rub, it won't come off, but for me, I just prefer just to press. Then what we can do is come along with our die. And now I know I can get that spot on perfect position when it comes to cutting. And then once we get that where we want, what I'm going to do with my low tack tape is just stick that on the outside because the outside's what's going to be the waist, not this inner part. So we're then just going to secure that in. What I'm going to do as well is we can set that one to the side. I'm going to come in with a little bit of that peach tone that you get included and another piece of the white cardstock. And then I'm going to go and add my heart onto that one. And this little one here, that's where, if you do choose to use it as a tag, this is where you can then feed your ribbon through to add it to your gift or your present. So for this one again, we're just going to go in, let's just tape that one down and then tape that one down here. We're going to bring in our plates now. Now we're going to go in with our junior plates so we can pop it on all the way on the top and cut them all at once. You can use your mini if you want to because of the size of these ones. But then we're going to rub that one through, feed that up to the Gemini. I am just going to then pause it. We're then going to reverse it. Can let it go all the way through. You've got that option, but then at least as well, it's a bit quicker with the Gemini too, and then it speeds it up even more if you are using the pause and reverse. So we've then got our little love heart. So we've got our little love heart here. Now what we are going to need is three of them. So I've already done two in the same way. So let's set that one to the side. We can then take our little tag and then we've got our little tag holder for our ribbon. You can feed the ribbon through with the little eye hole that's also cut. And then we've also got our solid heart that says, thanks for being you. Now you can use that on its own if you want to. Then what we're going to do is we're then going to take another piece of white cardstock and then we're going to take our outer die and then we're also going to take this inner die as well. Now you can do them separate if you so wish, that's entirely up to yourself, but as long as they're nicely secured, then I'm happy enough, safe in the knowledge that we are then able to cut them both. So let's line that one up, overlap, our low tack tape and then press and then we're just going to line our plate configuration up base cutting plate of course we're then going to go in with our frosted our magnetic and then our top plate i'm just going to let that do its thing and go all the way through and then the last piece of die cutting that we're going to do is with the acetate so if i take that one out now this is the part that we want so we've now got that lovely little perforation line just on that inner cut. But as we can see here, we need something. We need something to create that barrier on the back. So this is where our acetate comes into place. Now I've already peeled the back end off. Now what we need for this one is the solid die once again. So let's take all that off. We don't need that inner die. We just need the solid one. Now for it to cut, acetate we're going to need our metal shim for this one so we're going to pop our metal shim in we're then going to pop our die over our acetate and secure we're going to line that up the rest of the plates are the same frosted magnetic and top we're going to then go all the way through i'm just going to let that pause and reverse even though it's acetate if you let that go in one pass it's still going to cut like an absolute dream but because it's smaller, we may as well do that reverse. We're then going to bring this one out. Now, if you are new to the Gemini or you're new to die cutting in a hole, this is going to then create that indentation in your metal shim. So don't worry about that. That will happen. But what we've got is we've now got our love heart that's die cut within that acetate. So that can go to the side. And now we can start to build. So what I am then going to do 
is I've got a few of these layers already good to go, which are from the Craft Club. So I've cut this one to three and a half by five and a half inches. So what we can then do is add our tape runner. We're then just going to add a little bit in the middle to secure, as I like to do. And then when it comes to the card blank, it's four by six. Left a little bit of white to create that additional framework. What I've also done is taken a piece that's three by five of the patterned paper. And then I've gone in and I've created a very, very thin white matting layer. I'm using the foam on a roll that's also included. And I'm just creating that height and stability. We don't need to match the corners because we're not creating a shaker with this. What we can then do is come in and position that one into place. And then what we can then do is come in. This is one of the pattern papers. I've cut it to one and a half inches by five. So one and a half inches by five at that longest point and just created a little angle with my scissors. And then what we can do is peel these ones off. Again, doesn't need to match corner to corner because we're not creating a shaker with this. And then that can go into the middle. So that's our card blank, ready to go and decorate with our shaker. So let's go in with thanks for being you. And then what we need to do with this one, and I have already done this, is I've gone around with the red liner tape. As you can see, I've just done little sections, section by section. It's a lot easier to do that than try and do one continuous turn all the way around. So we're going to then add our pokey tool into the points to peel off. We're just going to peel these ones off. And these don't need to match either because this is just securing our acetate. And because we've cut our acetate to that perfect size of the love heart, what we're going to do is we're then going to overline and overlap and then press. And then I'm just going to press between my fingers. And now we've got that barrier in the middle of our love heart. So what we then need to do is we need to come along and we just need to spend just a little bit of time with this one. Don't rush this one. It is well worth the additional time that you put in. I'm going to go in with my foam on a roll and I like to do this in sections. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to snip down the middle. This is going to make it even easier for you to follow the outer lines. And then all that I'm going to do is I'm going to start at a starting point. For me, it's the base. And then we're just going to follow that all the way around. So we're following it around. We're then going to come to the last part that we're at. And then we're going to continue. Now at this point, remember, make sure the joins are joined together. So you've got no escapees when it comes to the sequence or the glitter, or the beads. We're just going to work that all the way along. It does not matter how many bits you use. The key thing is each of the ends touch. So we're just going to then snip up and then snip down. You can do it in one full snip if you're using your larger scissors. But you know me by now. I love my little snippy scissors. Follow around. And then when you get to that last part, finish that connection. I'm just going to lift that up just to make sure that it's all adhered, which it is. Finish that road of foam, snip off. And now we've got not only that barrier when it comes to the edge, but what we've also got that height for our shaker. So for this bit, I'm going to work my way around by peeling the back off. So let's just press that in and then move it all the way round with our fingers, peeling the backs off, and then I can set that one to the side. Choose your form of shaker. So you've got your crystals, you've got your chunky glitter, or you've got your glass beads. Let's go in with a little bit of chunky glitter. Now you can either decant in the middle and overlay, or if you're really careful, you can decant onto the inner aperture of that foam acetate layer and then position. 
something like this. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to go in and put a little bit within the middle. Now, either using your fingers or if you've got these little tweezers, and these are kind of like the little scoop tweezers, what you can do is pinch a handful and pop in the middle. And then if you're doing it this way, what you need to make sure is that you've got none of your sequence towards that outer edge. So we're just going to pull that in. We're going to flatten it, but we're going to pull it in from the edges here. If you get any on that outer edge, what's going to happen then is your actual foam on a roll is not actually going to adhere to the card. It's going to adhere to the sequence, and then you know what's going to happen. You're going to have all of your sequence starting to fall out. So therefore, we just want to make sure that we've got none on the edge. When you're happy with that, we're just going to lift up and then we're going to position bang over the top and then press down. Make sure you've got a really firm press. Now we've got a little tag with a little shaker in there that what we can then do is turn on its back. We're then just going to add a little bit of tacky glue or you can use your tape runner. Bring this one in and then that is the little tab that we've cut. The only difference with this one here is I've fed through a little bit of ribbon that you've got included. And then I'm just going to then pop that one on the back and press. Let's bring in our card blank because we're ready to decorate. So all that I need to do is bring that one in and that one in. Let's bring in a couple of hearts and then we we'll want to create a little matte and layer because although that looks lovely, we just want to create a layer. So what I have done is I've taken a piece of the green cardstock and then the two shapes surrounding the love heart. We've got the circle and then we've got the square. Now you can either cut with your guillotine or you can use this square to die cut. So it's our base cutting plate, frosted magnetic top plate and cut it out. And then I've created, with my guillotine, a really fine matte and layer. That can have the green on top of the white. We're then going to position that one in, like so. We're going to add our tape to the back. And then just to create a little bit of interest for the eyes, instead of going straight on, let's create it at a little square diamond. We're going to press that one in and then what I want to do is to add a little bit extra height. This is personal choice. You don't have to do this. You can keep it flat if you want to. I'm just going to add a little bit of extra height on the back of the heart. We can peel that one off, that one off. That one can go into here. And then I'm just going to bring in my tacky glue and then I'm going to do one Let's do two, and I'm actually, for extra decoration, let's pop one in that top corner. What you can even do if you wanted to, you could pop a few little die-cut hearts inside, or maybe you want to use the star or the flower. It's up to you. You could follow along and replicate this, or you can change it up yourself. But once that's into position, you've got this really, really cute four by six card that we've then added a shaker tag as the focal point. Instead of just a little sentiment, we've got our little shaker tag that you can see there, all saying thanks. And that is one of the projects and the cards that you can make from Craft Club, month number five, and it's all about the shaker techniques. Now with our craft club, month number five, all about the shaker cards, we're going to make this card. We were going to do quite a few layers within this one here, really build it up. Now the one difference when it comes to this one is I'm going to use a different pattern paper just to show you how it can look vary by vary on the papers. So what we're going to do to start with is we're actually going to do a little bit of stamping first. 
So I'm going to bring in my stamping platform and I'm just bringing in a piece of Nina cardstock. Now, if you don't have Nina or multi-purpose white cardstock, you can still use the white cardstock that's in your actual collection. However, you will always get that better result with Nina cardstock. But if you don't have it, as I say, the options there, you can be using the cardstock included. So all that you're going to do is we're going to ink up. Now, because we are using or we would be using our alcohol pens, our tri-blends, I'm using our alcohol proof Noir Black. And then all that I'm going to do, position that into place once I've inked up my stamp. And then once you're happy, remove it. And then you've got your stamped impression. Now, what I have already done is coloured one in. We will cut it out so you can see how to line it up, but I've already coloured it in with my tri-blends. Now, I've used LG3 and LG5, which is the greens. I've only used two of the shades, not the three. I've used MG4 and MG5, which is like a magenta shade. Also, just those two shades, not the three. And then the lilac, which is PV3 and PV4. Once again, just the two shades, not the three, and that's from the tri-blends. So I'm going to set that one out the way for now because we'll show you how you're just going to line up the dies. So what I'm then going to do is bring in the actual die set. Now this funny looking die is actually the die that's going to sit over the top. Now what you can do if you want is you can then stamp and then cut and colour afterwards or if you do want to then colour first then cut you absolutely can do. For me I do like to do the die cutting first simply because nothing worse than you spend all that time colouring it in then you go to die cut and then a little mistake happens the die moves and it's cut all the way through that time you've spent colouring. So that's why I always prefer to colour after I've cut, but it's entirely up to yourself. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trim some of that excess off just so that we can do a couple of layers of die cutting with the framework I'm going to show you. So let's do that. Let's bring in the actual die set. Now when it comes to the actual die set, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in this magenta cardstock. It's more fuchsia light magenta and I've cut it to four and a quarters by four and a quarter inches. Now what I want is just the inner framework die. So that's going to cut into my cardstock and the actual dotty scallop will stay in the card. If I want to release it, use the outline die, but I'm not going to do that for this one. I want to have quite a thicker outer frame. So what we can then do is then we can then run that one through. So this aperture in the middle, that's what would be technically the waste part. Of course, it's not going to be waste. We'll use that another time. But then we've got that one ready to go to. So the only other thing that I have already done is I've taken a piece of our white cardstock within the actual set and I've also cut that to four and a quarter by four and a quarter inches. Actually, let's, let's do it while it's here. Then I'm bringing in that inner frame here to cut. Now that's going to give us a really, really fine white frame. And that's what we want. So we're just going to go in and then we're going to line that up. So remember the cardstock was also four and a quarter by four and a quarter. So we're just going to tape that on and then we're going to tape that one on here. What we're then going to do, bring in my plates. So we're going to go in with my large plates here. So with our large plates, we're just going to need our two cutting plates, frosted and magnetic. So let's bring in these so we're good to go. So let's go in with one of the dies. Then we're going to go in with two of the dies. And then we can also come in with our floral. So let's line these ones up. So frosted, magnetic, top plate get them into position, and then we can let the Gemini 2 do its thing. So we're just feeding them through, and as you can see, it doesn't matter that I'm doing a framework, I'm doing an outline, I'm doing the aperture of the floral, it's all going to cut. Relatively new plates, so those cracking, absolutely normal to here, so don't worry. Move that out the way. So what we've then got is we've got this beautiful dot scalloped aperture, and then what we've also got 
is this really, really fine white framework. Now that looks lovely, but then when we position that one over the top, it's just going to finish it off and pull the eye in. And then of course, we've got our floral, which we've already colored in. So that is our aperture, our framework ready to go. So what we're then going to do is we're just going to set these bits out the way for a moment because we're going to create our own card blank. So I've taken my cardstock that's included and what I've done already is I've cut both of them, two sheets, to five and three quarters by five and three quarters and on one of them I've gone and I've scored at half an inch and created my little fold line. We're then just going to take our tape off I've used the red liner tape that comes within the craft club, but you can use your tacky or your tape runner. And we're going to line that one up and press. Now for this one, I would recommend doing a tent fold, which is a tent shape. And that's because there's going to be some weight with the shaker elements. If you do it traditionally, what could happen is the weight's going to pull the card over. So if you create a tent fold, you're evening out all of that weight. It's been distributed and therefore it's not going to then fall forward. So what we can then do is let's come in here with our frame. Now, to pop that over the top, I find it easier to add the acetate first because it gives it extra stability. So I've taken a piece of acetate to four and a quarter by four and a quarter inches and then all that I need to do is go in and take the protective backing off. I've already given it a little scrape with my pokey tool to release it and then we can go in once again with the red liner tape that you get within month number five. And we're going to work our way round the four edges here. Now the corners of the tape, they don't need to meet, just as long as we've got our red liner tape edge to edge. So we're going to go in and we can then pop that one into place. Because we've got a slight delicate frame here, you could, if you wanted to, you could use your tacky glue. The only thing with tacky glue is you'll need to leave that a bit longer to dry because your acetate is a non-porous surface. So it's got nothing to dry into. It needs to dry on top and that's what can take a while. But if you are using your red liner tape or you can be using your tape runner, what we're wanting to do is just make sure that we've then got our nice even edge to edge of the tape and you can either go over the top or you can then go corner to corner. So it's whatever is easiest for you. I'm going to go over the top here and then I'm going to match a corner. So I'm just going to bend that back slightly so the other side does not stick. Once I get into the corner, I'm just going to travel all the way up and then release my finger and then I'm just going to let that do its thing by slowly go into position and then press that in. So if you have a little bit of your acetate that's kind of just over the edge, what we can then do is take our scissors and then just snip. So we're just going to snip that one off here and then we're just going to snip that edge here. Alternatively, to make it even easier for yourself, what you could do is just put a whole sheet of acetate on the back and then cut afterwards. So you've got options, plenty of options. Now for the background. This is where I've used a different one to show you a different look. I've gone in and cut it to five and a half by five and a half inches. And I've gone in with a piece of black cardstock that is just a few millimetres bigger than the pattern paper. So we can go over the top and then position that where we want. Now, when it comes to assembling it together, you know, that will still look lovely. We're going to have our pattern paper in the back in a moment, but I still want to create that extra separation. It gives the eye something else to look at. They may be the same pattern, but by just creating a band, that separation, it kind of elongates it even more. Kind of a little bit of a trick on the eyes. Even although it is the same size, it just elongates it visually. So we're going to go in with my white cardstock that I've cut to five and a half inches by an inch and then given myself a little black matting layer. And then for this one, we're going to add our tape on. 
Now I'm going to go as central as I can, but you can go further up, further down. Either way, it's going to give you a different look on the eye as to where you position that band. But let's go in and position it into place. Now I'm not measuring it completely. I am really just going by eye. And then that's our base to go onto our card blank, which we're going to do now. And then we can go in to create that shaker. So we can bring in our card blank that we've made and pop that one into place here. And then what we can then do is bring back in that frame, bring back in that layer that we've already created with the acetate. And we're going to go in with our tacky glue. That's what I find easiest at doing. You don't have to do this framework if you don't want to. If you find it's a little bit too delicate, as you can see, what it does is it's creating an additional focal on the eye because it's creating that frame. So what we can then do is come in with this one. Now I'm going to start in the one corner because it is flexible and delicate. What we're going to do is start it off with using your tacky glue. It gives you that movability. So you don't have to be bang on first time. We're then going to run that one edge to edge and then we're going to follow all the way up. Extend that into where you need it to go and then we're just going to push and manipulate. So we've got that white work. It's kind of like a little cheat way to create a faux matte layer. So we can see we've got our white frame now. Then what we're going to do is bring this back in. So I'm going to go in and turn that one over and we're going to bring our foam on a roll and we're going to go edge to edge. So let's work it all the way round and then snip and then we're just going to make sure that each corner is touching. So we're going to snip and then we're going to go from one side to the other and then we're going to finish off with this last one, really push it in on itself. And then when we come up to here, I like to push right up to the edge and then I snip, just give myself a mill or so, millimetre or so, and really just press that in. So we've got that connection. You know nothing is going to come out of there. So let's turn it over and then let's bring in a piece of the pattern paper. So for this one, I've cut to four by four, but what I have done is I've backed it onto a piece of the white cardstock with my tacky glue. I've just given it a spread, popped it on, and then cut it to the size I want, which is four by four. What we can then do is then we can start to assemble. So I'm going to pop this one onto here first. It's easier for me. I'm going to go in, add my tape. We're then just going to position that one in. Let's have it so that little bit of color is poking out. We're then going to pop that in and press. I'm going to get these going by taking the backs off. So we're just going to peel. And then what we're going to do is take your chosen shaker medium. So I'm going to go in with some of the sequins and let's also add some crystals. We're going to add some crystals. We're going to do both together. So let's bring this one in. Now for this, the size is so much easier to go direct into the middle of your base. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop some into here. And then what we can then do is bring some of the crystals. So let's pull all of that in. I'm going to create a little bit of a well so that the crystals don't roll about. So push, push, push. That can go into the middle because they'll all get mixed together as soon as you start to shake. Close that one off. And then what we can then do is come in and because of the size, you're not going to see this matte layer on the outside. It's just to create that backdrop on the front side and then get that one into place. We're then going to move, manipulate. And then if you need to do a little bit jiggery pokery, you can do that into position and then press that one in. And then what we've got is we've then got our shaker. And then all we need to do to finish off is bring in a couple of sentiments that I've already stamped out. So these come from the sentiment step that we used the flower from. 
which you can see here. So I've gone in with make a wish and happy birthday and just created a couple of little points with my scissors. And then we're going to go in with our floral within the middle. Let's add on a foam pad. Let's just use our foam on a roll and tape that down with the foam. Tape that one down with the foam. The sentiments we are going to add on flat. So let's peel that one off, peel that one off. We're then going to go in, into the middle, add happy birthday and make a wish. So we're going to go in. This is going to be like a little tag that you see popping out. So that's going to go into here and then just line up and press and then make a wish is going to come down on that bottom right hand corner. That one can go into here, press that in, and then we've got our shaker element. If I turn that around for you to see, you can pop more in, less in, you can put some of the beads in if you want to. But there's a lovely card that you can also make when it comes to Craft Club month number five. It's all about the shakers. Music